Hello everyone, yet another marathon video from your boy. Season of the Worthy has been out for a few days now, and I've had some time to digest everything that's happened in the first week. Hopefully others have as well. So let's talk about first impressions of the season, PvE, sandbox, PvP, trials, all that. Speaking of trials, my merch, it's flawless. Merch available now until March 22nd. Please buy. Thank you. I'm going to start with the story. I wrote this section when the trailer first came out for Season 10. And so far, it still seems pretty accurate. I'm glad that Bungie is continuing to stick to wanting to chain events from season to season. But my first reaction to the plot element of this season was... Oh, man. Red Legion. Again. Great. It's not that I'm not interested in how Bungie will execute on this particular storyline coming into this season, because I think it's far more interesting than the Cabal trying to take over the Sundial. It's more so that I just don't really care about the Red Legion as one of the storylines that I was hoping Bungie was going to continue. In fact, it's probably one of the only storylines that I wanted Bungie to avoid. The Red Legion story kind of felt wrapped up to me back in the Gaul days. Now, if this was happening immediately after Gaul, and if there was a cutscene with his second-in-command saying to go do this, then I'm on board, absolutely. I think that's great. Random scions escaping and destroying the ship doesn't really get me jazzed up. I thought the Red Legion storyline was going to be a year-long event when Destiny 2 first came out, and man, was I wrong. With Gaul being gone and there being... No outward-facing villain that we know of other than a random bunch of scions. It doesn't really invoke that same excitement compared to when we've had more targeted villains like Oryx, like Gaul, even though we didn't really interact with Gaul one-on-one -on -one until the very end. When there are actual characters involved with the bad things that are happening, that's more exciting to me as a player. This is why something like the Pyramid Ships, the Darkness, or whatever random faction is the main antagonist for the season, for me, falls a bit flat. When there's no outward villain, I can't really get invested into this ambiguous idea of villainy that permeates throughout a season where I'm just killing unending waves of nameless mobs without a care. Season 8, it was the Vex. They're invading the moon. Season 9, it's the Cabal. They're invading the Sundial. Again, crashing the Almighty into Earth, much more exciting plot element. Although, Season 9's plot element of saving Saint-14 was also interesting. I was hoping that there would be a mission with us on board the Almighty at the start, making this discovery ourselves. Instead, it was a cutscene with Zavala and Anna Bray. Now, I'll take cutscenes, but being there with both of the NPCs fighting alongside, that would have been cool. I'm still hoping for a mission where we get to go onto the Almighty to maybe connect some sort of targeting beacon for Rasputin or whatever ends up happening. I think the main thing, though, is that I already feel like I know where we're going with this and that I can't really anticipate where the story might lead after this. As someone who is not well acclimated to lore, probably like 95% of the community, it feels like a dead-end storyline. We blow up the Almighty, hooray for us, where, where do you go from there? That is the expected storyline. I would honestly prefer if we failed and the Almighty crashes into something, because at least that would be more interesting. Failure is unexpected in this world, and right now I need some surprise. I need other, more interesting storylines to be continued. Obviously, Bungie has some semblance of a storyline ready to go for the next few seasons. They're on a path to something. I'm just hoping that it'll eventually be storylines that I care a bit more about than something like the Red Legion. I asked some friends who are more linked with the lore and story about where they believe this supposed dead-end story will go. They clued me in. And it makes sense, although I'm not sure I'm too stoked about that idea either. I think I'm just way more interested in what the next big expansion's plot will be. I'm not going to spoil uh, their notes here, but ask someone who knows lore what's up. Anyway, let's move on from the story. 
This brings us to the main PvE portion of the season, or what seems like it, Rasputin. Rasputin needs to be reconnected, satellites relinked, and all that good stuff. This is done through a hybrid of some of the seasonal investment systems we've had recently, namely, well, last season. Seraph Bunker upgrades are very similar to Obelisks from Season 9, more or less, just with more upgrades. The main activity is the Seraph Tower public event, with Legendary Law Sectors and the Seraph Bunker clearing events being secondary. In a vacuum, I like the Seraph Tower public event. It's fine. Nothing wrong with it. The better you play, the faster you go, killing lots of enemies is fun, and let's just say that I completely understand the Orpheus rig nerf now. Activating the bot is pretty neat as well, but within the context of the entire season, knowing that my main seasonal weeklies will revolve around completing this public event and being at the mercy of randoms and whatever law sector happens to be active three times a week, I'm kind of not that interested. It's nice that there is the slightest bit of integration with the rest of the game where you can do other activities and get seasonal currencies, and I hope this ramps up as outlined in Luke Smith's recent post. I realize the changes outlined in the post are going to take some time before they can be fully developed on, and that it is unreasonable to expect instantaneous change due to the development process. Feedback that Bungie got from Season 7 could likely only be worked on for Season 9, which is why I'm guessing the Sundial felt so similar to the Menagerie. Season 9 feedback probably won't happen until Season 11 at the earliest. That does not change the fact that I'm not that interested and a little bored and will continue to be for most things revolving around this public event sort of deal. That information also does not mean you are not allowed to criticize what we got, because I will criticize it all day. See a lot of people fatiguing on the throwing a ball mechanic. I feel you there. Unfortunately, Bungie can't really get complex with something like a public event. Even strikes can't get that complex. Anything that is match made cannot get too complex. Ball throwing is much more interactive than stand on the plates, sure, and Bungie probably could toy with some similar level mechanics in terms of difficulty, but until I stop hearing, Oh my god, randoms don't know how to do the corrupted strike! I don't think matchmade activities are getting any more complex than what they are right now. Legendary Lost Sectors are Lost Sectors set to 1000 power with champions in them. That's really about it. You can pop open a chest with an encrypted bit at the end for some at-level loot. If you get to rank 3 on a bunker, the bot that you summon can basically do about 75% of the work for you. The robot's awesome, and I love it. It's, it's great. But otherwise, there's not really that much else to these things. The Daily Seraph Bunker Clear functions pretty much the same way. It takes a couple of minutes, but if you want to automate that, you can auto-clear the bunker by buying a consumable. The main way you'll be getting currency for the season is... Bounties. Trivial, trivial bounties. Not only that, but you are constantly forced to switch back and forth between guns, and at the start of a season, when you're grabbing bounties from three different sources, it is exhausting to do this on a daily basis if you want to maximize your time playing with regards to gaining XP. Now, you may be thinking, Oh, ironic, Datto, that you don't want to be forced to use certain guns for bounties, and yet you advocate for weapon retirement. Hmm. Yes. The difference is bounties are a daily occurrence, whereas weapon retirement is a yearly occurrence. Big difference there. I don't want to have to micromanage my loadout to that level on a daily basis. Gunsmith bounties are a little more acceptable for requiring certain guns. He's the gunsmith. You know, I get it. Weapon retirement video coming soon, by the way. It's also incredibly long. <laughs> Sorry. The first half of the season for me will consist of waiting for Grandmaster Nightfalls. However, Grandmaster Nightfalls are actually loaded up in the game and you can see a bunch of information about them, including power level modifiers and rewards. And I gotta say, if GM Nightfalls are just Master Nightfalls with higher power level and only give you a higher chance at an exotic, I will be less than impressed. I am hoping for some sort of competitive aspect to them, something that will motivate me more maybe than something like 70 stat roll exotics or whatever they end up making the reward. 
As far as seasonal rewards go, it appears that none of the new guns are able to roll with a damage and reload perk at the same time, perhaps in preparation for weapon retirement sometime in the future. This has a lot of people bummed out, because the guns will not be as good as anything people might have right now. Another more likely reason that these guns don't have these crazy perk combinations is because of the Seraf orbs that can drop if you're using those weapons and wearing the Season 10 mods. If you're not using mods, then sure, the weapons are whatever. But because of low access to the weapons themselves and the mods, not many people are familiar with said orbs and mods. I'll be doing my best to unlock all the mods as fast as possible, as the Seraph orbs by themselves are pretty good, and the mods really amp them up. I think people are sleeping on these right now. I think these might end up being pretty strong in PvE. We're going to talk about Tommy's matchbook, the seasonal exotic, in another video, hopefully. Uh, but for now, I think it's pretty good. The double damage is quite noticeable, and the fact that the weapon only burdens your shield off and not all of your health like Touch of Malice did is nice to make the gun a bit more usable. Not the biggest fan of it in PvP, but that's maybe too early of a take. I think the scope jitter is a bit much for me at the moment. I would definitely like to practice with it a bit more. No raid, again, is disappointing, but not unexpected, given that Bungie is working with fewer resources this time around this year. I do not expect to see a raid until this September or October's expansion. I don't think Bungie would use the resources that they have to make a raid for Season 11, when the big expansion would be right around the corner from then. No ritual weapons besides the Iron Banner bow, which I'll be honest is pretty difficult to get excited about because number one, it's Iron Banner, and number two, it's a bow, is also a disappointment. To me, the disappointment is the lack of a focused goal where I can complete a somewhat long-term objective and be rewarded for it without it needing to be drip-fed to me. I say long-term objective because they used to be long-term, whereas last season, all three of them could be done in a weekend. And let's be honest, whatever rituals that would have come out would have simply been whatever archetype of gun or weapon that they wanted, with some of the best perks in the game placed on said weapons. Then we have this stat tracking emblem fiasco. I had a big paragraph ready to go on how Bungie messed up with this and where are my stats, but... They came out with an update saying that, number one, data is not lost, and number two, they will be restoring some of those stats as we move into the future. The first things to come back will be kills per subclass, gold medals in Crucible, Glory Wind Streak, Valor Resets, Pit of Heresy Solos, Fractaline Donated, and Season 8 and 9 rank levels. Bungie wants feedback into what stats they should start restoring first. I think this is probably the best way it could have been handled. Bungie explained their reasoning, said they messed up, and are now trying to remedy the situation, and that's fine by me. I don't think these stats should have been removed in the first place, but at least they are trying to put them back in the game. I like that we're getting stats, more stats built into the game with various filters as well. This is nice once everything is restored. Another thing that is nice, the UI redesigns on the inventory screen and the quest tab look pretty good. No complaints there. Nice job. The PvE sandbox saw a huge nerf to snipers with Izanagi's burden taking a rather big hit. I still think it's going to be tough to beat that big of a burst of damage, especially when people start to get to the level of things like Legendary Law Sectors and the Master Nightfall, but I'll be diving into what the best damage options are going forward in other videos. The Sanctified Mind raid boss is basically taking an extra damage cycle to kill now, which isn't the biggest deal in the world to me, but for other groups, might be a tougher experience. I will reiterate from a past video though, the incentive to use close range weaponry in higher power level activities is not really there in terms of the risk to reward ratio. It just so happens that this season is the season of close range weaponry when it comes to seasonal mods. So you don't really have much of a choice as far as seasonal mod weapons, although you do have your choice in special and power slots. Unless they bludgeon snipers to death or greatly increase the effectiveness of getting in the fray of enemies that are 20 to 30 levels above you, 
I don't see snipers ever becoming a bad option. On the PvP side of things, we have the return of Trials and a tuned up sandbox for it. With regards to the sandbox and Trials, dare I say, we're in a pretty good spot all things considered. The mountaintop was really the only thing that tilted me in Trials. It's still a stupid gun and I hate seeing it and I can't wait until I never have to see it again in what time is it? Four years or whatever. But otherwise, I don't really think in the five hours that I played Trials that I encountered anything that I would have considered BS. No more Controverse Hold spamming Warlocks. No more wall hacking OEM Titans. No more Lord of Wolves spam. Ammo economy feels mostly good. Revoker's eh, not that big of a deal in Trials. When I died, it didn't feel like I was dying to something stupid, unless it was mountain top. It was because I missed shots or I got outplayed. And it feels like it hasn't been that way in a while. I haven't played much PvP outside of Trials, though, and I have seen a couple of outliers that might become a problem during the season. We'll see. Auto Rifles have been making their way back into the meta, and Suros and Hardlight are making big pushes. They are still going to require precision, though. You can very much still lose to hand cannons, pulses, all the same stuff. You just have a better chance now. And flinching a sniper has never been easier. Let me tell you, these things flinch hard. Hard light is basically a laser beam at this point. Although I'm not sure if it's really in this needs a nerf territory right now. It is very strong. I don't think it's overpowered though. Not right now anyway. The lack of range fall off and newly buffed stability make it a massive threat. And you can really, really melt people. But you can also die horribly because your tracking was bad. On the power level side of things, this first week had artifact power enabled, much to the displeasure of the casual player. That will be turned off in following weeks, so you won't have to worry about that. My thoughts on power level mattering in Trials is this. If you are lower level than your opponent, then yes, you will be at a disadvantage. It was not impossible to win if you were out leveled though. I went against a team that was 30 or 40 levels below myself and my team, and we got rolled because we didn't take it seriously and because they came in with a set strategy, executed it very well, did something we did not expect, and we got owned. If you outskill the other team, even if you're lower level, I'd say the odds are still in your favor. I like that power advantages being enabled rewards people who are more active players or choose to participate with more parts of the game. But obviously, this makes it less ideal for the more casual player. I don't really think that power levels necessarily need to matter in PvP nowadays. I think it is a little bit of a dated mechanic. And most of the time, the higher skilled team is probably going to win regardless of power level. On the topic of rewards, there are no adept weapons for going flawless in Trials like there were in Destiny 1. Bungie has confirmed that you do not need to go flawless in order to get armor. This first week in particular just happened to give weapons as rewards for your third, fifth, and seventh win on your card. Flawless this week was the gloves. The following week, who knows? This has been leading to the question of, why bother trying to go flawless if there are no flawless rewards? I guess we'll exclude the emblem and the armor glow as the emblem is a one-time thing and people do not appear to care about a temporary glow. At this rate, might as well exclude the bonus pinnacle level item too because it's not really what people are looking for. Really quick, rewards in trials work like this. At three, five, and seven wins, you get a tier two powerful, a tier three powerful, and then a pinnacle respectively. The loot that you get at those wins rotates weekly, and again, it has been confirmed, you do not need flaws in order to get the armor set. You can also turn in tokens when you hit three wins for packages, and the loot in those packages is pulled from the loot that you have already earned while playing Trials, although I'm not sure if it's that particular week or all weeks. So if you got seven wins, then you're able to pull the three, five, and seven win items from packages. Tokens do disappear weekly though, so spend them. The fact that we do not have something on the level of adept weapons does not surprise me at all nowadays with the constant reduction of high quality loot in the end game. After all, high quality loot in places where the average player cannot get it 
tends to lead to a lot of complaints from said section of the player base. It happened with raid loot, and unsurprisingly, it happened with trials loot. It does not appear that Bungie wants to reward high skill players in PvE or PvP with top quality loot as to not alienate the population that is not skilled enough to get it. Is that the reason we don't have adept weapons? I don't know, but it's definitely one of my guesses. There absolutely could be other issues as well. I don't really see what the problem would have been with making celerity an intrinsic perk on adept weapons in addition to whatever two random perks you got on a gun from the flawless chest, especially considering what perk rolls you're capable of getting on guns this season. Celerity is really only good in trials and comp anyway. By the way, Celerity is a perk where if you're the last person alive on your fire team, you get increased target acquisition, handling, reload speed, and reduced flinch. Trials, much like the raid, is end game level content, and more people need to be okay with the fact that you might not be able to get everything if you are not good enough to get it. But until I stop seeing comments from people whinging about the fact that they can't get the cool or good loot because they're not capable of going flawless, and Bungie seemingly obliging those comments, Expect nothing in this category. Definitely would like to know the reason Bungie opted away from flawless weaponry though, and I definitely would like to see armor ornaments or a more permanent cosmetic option if we're not going to get adept weapons going into the future. As for other loot earning pathways like bounties in D1, you could earn items from completing bounties, but in D2, that does not appear to be directly the case. You can turn in tokens for loot, though, which you earn via bounties, so it's not really that far off. You're just a little more limited in items that you can earn on a weekly basis. As for Trials itself returning mainly unchanged from Destiny 1 after Bungie said they wanted to retool it, my guess is that besides the various cards, half of which were boons from Destiny 1, Bungie did not have many ways to retool Trials that would have kept it true to the original. At the same time, did it really need retooling as a game mode? I'd argue not really. Trials of the Nine was basically the same thing, just with a different game type. That didn't really evolve the experience either, because it probably didn't need to be evolved. There were a lot of extra security measures made recently in order to enhance protection of players from network attacks and to catch more cheaters. Therefore... It would not surprise me if Trials went away until Bungie could get these security measures in place to prevent or slow down network-based attacks on players like DDoSing or Direct Denial of Service. This is a much bigger deal than I feel like people have been giving it credit for, so good on Bungie for getting this up and running. A more minor note on something else that happened with this season, semi-related to the previous couple of paragraphs. Bungie. You're soft for not requiring Flawless for the Enlightened title anymore. To hear that it was bugged and that you were never actually supposed to need Flawless for the title, you're soft. You are soft. If you can't Flawless the raid, you shouldn't get the title. End of story. The raid is the one piece of content in the game that's actually hard for people. Raid titles are among the more difficult titles to get. Keep them that way. Stop making the stuff easier and lamer. Make people earn something. Lord knows you can already get so much in this game doing public event level stuff. Keep the raids and the raid titles difficult. You're soft. Luke Smith put it well when he said he felt like all people were doing when they were collecting weapons were checking boxes. This season, to me, is going to feel just like that based on the first week alone. A checkbox. A giant checkbox. I only care because I want to check the box, and there are not many other motivators. I'm not super invested into running a public event for three months, and I have my doubts as to GM Nightfalls being something I'll be interested in running over and over again, at least until we get more information. If you're on the fence about buying this season, watch my video on how the season works. It'll give you a good idea of the seasonal loop. If you had enough of Season 9 and are looking for something significantly different that isn't Trials, I'm not sure you're going to find it in Season 10. When GM Nightfalls launch, if they're more than what I'm expecting, I will be sure to talk about it. Again, like I said at the beginning of the video, I was not expecting Bungie to be able to capitalize on most things in Luke Smith's post in this season. 
The turnaround would have been way too soon, and Bungie cannot scrap a ton of work and remake it in a month or a few weeks. It's just not going to happen. It's just not something people really want to hear, and I understand that. It's exhausting for me to keep reiterating this point and this information, because I feel like I talk about it every other season. I understand that Bungie is working with much more limited resources than last year, and that my expectations should be lower. Unfortunately, much like how most people do not care about the process of how I make a video, most people also do not care about the plight of game development. All that matters is what is delivered, and what was delivered does not seem to have delivered thus far. You know what will deliver, though, is my merch! My merch. My merch. Someone, help, Someone me. help me! Please! please. 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 I, can't I can't stop! stop. 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 Those are my first impressions on Season 10. If you enjoyed the Odyssey, but if it was about Season 10 of Destiny, a positive rating is appreciated. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.